What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and I'm here with the review for The Shy Season 4, episode number. What number is this? Number 3. Native Sun is the name of the episode. Alright, you guys, so before we get into this video, let's get the pleasantries out. If you guys are watching this video, or any other video on the channel, and you're not subscribed to the video, what are we doing? Why are we going on dates? And you're not, you know, paying for it. Not fair. Not right to me. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. Now, without further ado, let's get into this episode review, shall we? Alright, you guys. So I think I'm gonna start up with the stuff that was the most interesting to me in this episode. And it's gonna revolve around Trig, Imani, Tracy, Duda, Rose. It'll deal with all of them because it was really interesting to me. So we see Tracy. So Tracy is out talking with Duda and, you know, he asked her, what would she do if he gave her five million dollars? And she was like, I don't know what to say. And I wouldn't begin to know where to start with that. He tells her that's how much the police spend and sometimes more. I'm like, wow, five million dollars. So he's also flirting with her heavily. So then Trig comes in and tells him to watch the news. So when he turns on the news, we find out that the cops, the white cops, have stated that, you know, since he's saying that the black folks are saying that they don't need him, they want police in the black neighborhoods. Well, okay. I guess if that's what you want to say, go for it. So Trig tells him that we need a plan in action and, you know, Duda was telling him to leave and Trig's like, wait, no. He is right. Like, we do need a plan and we do need to, you know, have money behind us. So she wants him in. So then we see Rose. She and she's talking to Duda saying that there are a lot of rules and red tapes to dismantling the system. He says, fuck that. And he has a he has scissors to cut that red tape. So then Marcus comes in, who is Gemma's dad. And, you know, he's telling him, you know, how this plan it may work and it may backfire, but if it does work, then this may get them the Olympics. I'm like, dude, are you, I mean, the fact that you are more concerned about the Olympics than the mistreatment of black people and brown people is alarming as hell to me. So Rose leaves and she tells him, so when you do have a game plan, call me. So I'm like, okay. So then we move over to Imani's shop. So at Imani's shop, she's, you know, doing one of her friend's hair and then Nuck comes in and he has his girl, just one of his girls with him and that girl looks like she's been battered, abused and everything. I'm like, girl, get out of it. And Iman is like, do you have an appointment? He says, no, don't need one. So then Rashad comes back with some of her supplies and Rashad knows Nuck. So then Rashad and Nuck, they eventually leave. And when Nuck and Rashad leave, you know, um, Imani is washing her hair. And she's like, when is the last time you washed your hair? She's like, it's been a while. I'm like, you can tell. And she, Imani says, are you good? She says, I'm not good. So then Rashad and Nuck, they went to a bar. And Rashad, not Rashad, but Nuck is asking Rashad, do you work for that thing? I'm like, well, damn, that's disrespectful as fuck, but that's, how some niggas feel, unfortunately, in this day and age, is still how some niggas feel about trans women. They call them things. And he was like, well, you know, with my PO, I have to have some kind of work. So Trig hooked that up. And, you know, Knuckles like, shit, I want to no, work for her. I'd rather go to jail. And I'm like, damn, you would rather be in jail? Tell me you gay without telling me you gay is what I want. That's just how I feel. You can shoot me, you can you can disagree or not, but that's just what I feel like. You would rather be in jail with no freedom, a bunch of niggas. Why? When well, you can be free, live your life. If you want to have multiple women, you can have that, but you'd rather be behind bars with a bunch of niggas with no freedom. Cool. Again, so then he tells her, he, and these are his words, Zach, not mine. He tells Rashad that that is a nigga in a dress. Those are his words, not mine. I don't, I don't live like that. I don't believe like that. So here's where the episode got interesting for me. 
So you guys remember, Duda, he has defunded the police, right? And the funny thing with the defunding of the police, because even when Rose said it, it's like people think when you say defund the police, they think you mean dis, disman, dismantle, abolish. People are not saying that. Take some of the money that the police, which he's doing, take some of the money that the police force is using that, and divert that money to other areas. Mental health, like when you get a call for someone who needs, um, you know, who is in a situation where, you know, it might be a person who has a mental health issue. Send out someone licensed that can handle that situation. Instead of just sending the cops out who don't know how to handle that. And when someone is in the middle of a mental break, they don't pull a gun, pull a gun and kill a person who otherwise was very harmless. But I do get so I can kind of get where they're coming from with this scene. But it's also a scene. It's also like absolutely not for me. I wouldn't want it to happen, but I know why they're doing it. So Tracy and Trig. They have this community thing where people will call them instead of the cops when they have an issue. And like I said, you guys remember, and, and what I just mentioned earlier is that the cops said that they are not going to help the black people. So, I, I mean, it's a, I guess it's a double-edged sword at this point. Like, you can't, the cops won't come help you if you call them. So, what other options do you have? But in my notes, I said, oh, hell no. Yes, it's community protection, and my note literally says community protection, my ass. So, um, let's move over back to the girl who was at Imani's shop. So, we find out that she wanted help from Imani, but Imani said she couldn't help her. And then, you know, Imani talks to her friends, and they suggest, well, why don't you talk to Trig about that? So, she's, I guess that's what she's going to do. So, then we see Tracy and, um, and uh, Trig. Now, they got a phone call about a disturbance so they went to this they went and again like i said i get it but absolutely not okay they're going airplane so yeah they couldn't you know so they pulled up now it was a guy and his girlfriend they were arguing about only fans <laughs> i guess the guy you know we'll talk about that in just a little bit but you know tracy is trying to talk to the young lady and Trig is trying to talk to the guy. The guy pops the shit out of Trig, and then, you know, old dude that's with Trig pulls a gun. I'm like, that ain't helpful. Why you pull a gun on him? That is what we're talking about with the cops. That's what our issue is with the cops. They are trigger happy, and here you are just because Trig got punched in the face. Subdue, the, subdue him. Don't pull a gun on the nigga. Like, that's the problem we are. That's the problem we're having. Stop pulling, being trigger happy. Now, the young lady, she didn't want to talk to Tracy. I don't really blame her, to be quite honest with you. But eventually, you do see her and Tracy talking. So, um, her guy has been out of work for a while, and she's done OnlyFans to make you know ends meet with the house. They do have a, 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 a young lady that lives with them. They're both her guardian. And Tracy suggests that they, both, they all get counseling, which is a good thing. I agree with that. So, then we see Trig. So, Trig goes home, and Imani asks him, like, what the fuck happened to your eye? And he tells her everything. She says, you're not the police. He says, I know. She says, so where are you planning? It? Where are you, what's your plan? He says, you know, we just want those, um, we just want the, those terrorists out of our neighborhood. So then she tells him about, you know, Nug's girl and that they need help. He says it's not his issue. And that pissed her off. So she's like, you know, what's this? It's not your issue. This bed ain't your issue tonight. Go sleep on the couch. And when is Rashad moving out? He says he's working on it. So, once again, let's talk about Marcus. Marcus. So, I'm noticing that Marcus and Rose both are just concerned about this Olympics shit. Like, really? Y'all can give one iota, of a, one iota of a F about people being abused by the, at the hands of the cops, but whatever. So, Tracy comes in with a report, and Rose is very rude to her. You can leave it and get out. I was like, well, excuse you, bitch. Literally, excuse you. Excuse you? The fuck? I would, you know, if I was Trace, I would have, I was like, nope, 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 nope. I wouldn't even, I would even entertain Rose because Rose was just rude. So, 
Then Rose asked Tracy's, you know, how does she plan to patrol the city with a few hundred people who are untrained? And Tracy says, I'm not planning to, you know, patrol the entire city. I'm only dealing with the black neighborhoods. And like I said, once again, Rose was just rude as all F. And, you know, Rose um, was asked to leave and, you know, Tracy left as well. And Marcus told Duda to, you know, watch his back with her. He, Duda, I thought he was talking about Rose. He says, no, I'm talking about Tracy. And I'm like, Tracy? He needs to watch his back with you. So then we see Trig and Tracy. They're having a meeting. And, yeah, I'm just... I wouldn't, this wouldn't be, from, this would not go over well with me in my, well, it wouldn't go over well with me in, in any community where the people are policing. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. That shit just would never work with me. So, you know, Duda is there. He talks to the people. And then after it's over, he tells Tracy he's going home for a nightcap. And Tracy's like, can I join you? I was like, ooh, this happened sooner than what I expected. I did not. I didn't expect to see Ro, you know, Tracy and Duda in the first two episodes or three. I thought we'd probably get it at the midway point, but nope, we got it in episode three. So then we see Tracy and Duda, they back at his place and they getting hot and heavy. And Rose walks in and she's like, oh, you didn't have to stop because of me. You know, I must have missed my invitation, but don't stop. I like to watch. I was like, ooh. And they kept going. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, they really finna do this in front of her. I was like, ooh. 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 Honestly? Ooh. I ain't even judging. I'm really not judging. Like, I, cause I, I'll be here for it too. I'll be like, ooh, let me watch that. Like, yeah. Take that. Give it to her. <laughs> I'm goofy. Don't mind me, you guys. I'm goofy as hell. But, I mean, actually, I really would. I'm like, oh, you know what? It's so interesting. Because, <laughs> honestly, I could see it with those three because they they actually all three will look they look good together, to be quite honest with you guys. They look I'm like, oh, I can see Tracy and Rose getting together. I can see Tracy, Rose, and Duda getting together. And I can see Tracy and Duda getting together. I'm like, it's going to happen. It's gonna happen, Mark. It's gonna happen. All three of them gonna have a, a little, you know, a little threesome at some point. I feel like it's gonna happen. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next up, let us talk about. Oh, I forgot to mention that. I guess we'll talk about that. Um, let's talk about Emmett and Tiffany. So Emmett and Tiffany. Tiffany finally came home from sleeping with um, Dante. Emmett was waiting up for Tiffany, and he asked her where was she. She said she was with a customer. He asked if it was a male customer. She says yes. He said, did you fuck him? She says, yeah. He says, who was it? She says, it was Dante. And he gave better head than you. I was like, oh, shit. Girl, you're just going to attack his ego. Ooh, Tiffany Cole. But I was here for it. So then we see him and he's pleading with Tiffany, but then he goes one step further and he asks Tiffany, did Dante pull out when they were having sex? Because we don't want no mishap of you getting pregnant and not knowing who the daddy is. I was like, Emmett, you could have kept that one to yourself, buddy, because that was not the best comment to make. But, you know, it's Emmett. And she says, you know what? We came so many times. I don't know if he pulled out or not. I was like... High five, Tiffany. I was with Tiffany. I'm like, yes, Tiffany. Let's be petty to get. Let's get that petty. I was with Tiffany. I ain't even gonna knock Tiffany at all. So then we see Emma. He's at work and he's prepping. And Dom comes in. She's like, nigga, what are you doing here? You know nothing about prepping. He says he has a lot going on. He's going through a lot. And she says, what what's going on? He says, I told Tiff. She's like, why would you do that? He said the same reason that you told Darnell. No, the same reason, the reason you told Tiffany is because you felt guilty about what you were doing. Dom wasn't with Darnell when you, when y'all had sex. You were definitely with Tiffany when y'all had sex and then you proposed to Tiffany. So that was your guilt. So then, you know, he tells her, you know, she was um, fucking with Dante. And she said, like, wait, Dante? He's like, you know Dante? She's like, yeah, he's the one that taught me how to make the edibles. 
He's like, you fucking him too? He, she says, no. He's like my play cousin, so definitely not doing that. So Dom is just worried about this whole thing because, you know, she and Tiffany, she feels, you know, a friendship with Tiffany. And she's like, damn it, Emmett, like, I don't have very many female friends. And then I look at Tiffany and we have a friendship and then you go and tell her that we fucked. What the hell? So then we see Jada. So Jada is, you know, making the some shots. I'm like, oh, well, little homie must be with her. And Emmett walks in. She's like, damn it, Emmett. Like, the key was for emergencies because she's naked. And then, you know, he wants to talk to her and, you know, you know he wants help with Tiffany because he feels that Tiffany's going to leave him. And then Suede walks out naked. He's like, this nigga again? And, you know, he gets mad and he leaves. I'm like, but Emmett, you walked into her apartment. Like, how are you going to be mad about somebody else in her apartment? Okay. So then we see Emmett, he's talking to um, Keisha at the restaurant and, you know, they talk, they're talk. they talking and then Tiffany comes in with the baby saying that she has some errands to run. Now, once Tiffany left, Keisha was like, what's going on between you and what's going on? He's like, I told her the truth about me and Dom. She was like, oh shit. He's like, yeah, she's been very silent since. She's like, oh shit. When a black woman gets quiet, you should be scared. So, we see Tiffany and Dom. Well, actually, we see Dom and Darnell. Darnell is over there eating some edibles, and he's eating a lot of them. I'm like, ooh, Darnell. From one person to the next who's done an edible. You don't chug a whole lot of edibles, and you don't chug them all. Ooh, I remember my first experience with the edible. It wasn't a fun one. Well, it was semi-fun, but that high. Ooh, damn, how do people eat edibles? I don't get, my best friend, she still wants, like she asked me, do I know anybody who makes edibles? I'm like, girl, no, I don't. I don't ever want to try that shit again in my life. That high, how long was I high for when I ate that edible? And it was a, it was a small piece of a brownie. I think I was high from, so it was a Sunday. The Walking Dead came on, so The Walking Dead comes on here in Texas at eight o'clock at night. So the high took effect at eight o'clock. Now, mind you, I ate the edible about 6.30, between 6.30 and seven o'clock. I ate the edible between 6.30 and seven because Big Brother came on and I watched that and I wasn't high doing Big Brother because actually I had cooked some break, I had cooked some lunch, some dinner. <laughs> I, was, I was really high. I was, that's a story time for you guys one day. That is going to be a story time. The time, my first edible. Because I was trying to figure, it was a lot of shit I was trying to figure out. I'm like, what the hell is going on with me? Damn. That is interesting. Because I'm just thinking about something. I'm not going to say it out loud. I'm not going to say it out loud because, like I said, this is a story time for you guys one day. But damn, that makes sense now. Actually, I can't say it. So I, I was cooking that night and I made tacos and I was eating my tacos. But you guys know, like when you warm up a taco chili and if you let it sit for too long, it'll get cold and it'll get a little droopy and saggy. Well, that's what happened with my taco chili. It got droopy and saggy. And I was trying to figure, I had been trying to, I was trying to figure out that whole night. I'm like, why? I just, I'm like, I just made this taco. I must have been eating really slow. I must have been eating hella slow because that shit was cold. I didn't realize it, but whatever. But yeah, Darnell, lesson, don't do that ever again. So Dom wants to know how she and Ke Tiffany are. And Tiffany says, we're good. Like, I'm not mad. Like, I'm tired of being mad. And sh so Tiffany is talking to, to her clients that are two gay men. And they tell her, like, shit, you know, y'all been sharing each other for the longest time. Why not open up the relationship? And I was like, exactly. And I was saying the same thing with Emma and Tiffany. I'm like, why don't you just have an open, open marriage at this point? Like, you fuck who, like, y'all can fuck whoever. If y'all want to fuck somebody together, do that. If y'all want to fuck somebody solo, do that. But in the grand scheme of things, just be honest with each other about who you're sleeping with. So that way, no, nobody nobody can be mad. Be like, oh, who this nigga? Or who's, who this chick? Like, I know about this motherfucker. Like, be honest about it. So both Darnell and Jada were fucked up. Darnell said he didn't want to be high no more. Darnell, I, I know that feeling all too well, buddy. 
I know that feeling. I felt that feeling. I was high from eight o'clock at night till 1.30 in the morning. It was 1.30 in the morning. So at the end of this, Tiffany suggests to Emmett that they have an open marriage. At first he was confused, but then he says, okay. Like nigga, just say okay at this point. But let's move on you guys. All right, you guys. So um, let's talk about the kids. And um, so the episode opened, we see Nina. So she's talking to Keisha about, cause Keisha went to the kitchen to get something to eat. And you know, she's getting on Keisha about eating junk food where she should be eating something nutritional for her and a baby. She's talking to Kevin about, you know, um, about hard work. Like if he works hard now, later in his life, he can just chill and relax and it'll be easy. But if not, it'll be hard for him. And then we also saw, which this was the scene that I realized I forgot. We saw Trigg, so Trigg was at home and he asked Jake why was he there. And Jake said because he got suspended. And I guess Jake got suspended because he got caught with that white girl in the bathroom. And Rashad, please stop talking about the little white girl's ass like that. And Kevin also got suspended as well. So both Kevin and Jake are going to school and Nina and Trigg are trying to figure out why y'all going to school. So it's in school suspension. So then we see Dre. So Dre is, you know, she's getting ready to leave. And Nina's like, but I thought you didn't have a meeting on Mondays. She's like, yeah, I got one today. But actually, she wasn't going to a meeting. She was actually meeting up with Jada. And she was asking a doctor about, you know, holistic treatments, you know, um, dietary things, um, you know, um, what's that stuff that Monique does from Potomac? What's that shit called? Those herbal stuff, whatever it's called. I can't think of it. He says he's, he's a traditional doctor. He says that the cancer is more aggressive than what they thought and that they need to start chemotherapy immediately. So at this point, we find out that Jada has not told Emmett because she doesn't want to add to his burden with Tiffany. I'm like, I'd rather you add to my burden than, you know, something bad happen to you and I'd be the last one to know. So we see the in-school suspension with Kevin and Jake. So the teacher, you know, he's trying to be a woke white teacher and he's telling, you know, Kevin and Jake to write about their experience that they had. Kevin is all for it. Jake says, that's like a bunch of bullshit to him. So then we see Gemma. So Gemma and Kevin are walking through the hallway and Gemma is reading his paper and she likes it. So, you know, she says, why don't you come on my, um, on her show? She do the morning announcements and talk about it. He says, nah, we good. But she feels like it can help the people. Like I said before, Gemma, she's kind of annoying to me at this point. So then she sees Jake and she asks him, you know, can she see his paper? He says, I ain't write that bullshit. And she asks him to come on the show. So then we see Jake and, you know, he's doing an interview and Kevin and the, and the rest of the students are watching. And honestly, you can see that Kevin was just a little bit uncomfortable by it. And I think this is going to be the beginning of the end for Gemma and, and Kevin where she goes and gets with Jake. Because we saw at the end of the scene when they were having dinner, you know, we saw Keisha, she was crying. And I think that has something to do when she saw um, Emmett's little boy playing, you know, on the video game. We saw Kevin text Gemma. Gemma, you know, got the text message, left him on red and did not respond. I'm like, oh shit, Kevin, you're about to lose your girl, homie. You're about to lose your girl to your homie, literally. But that's the episode, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop anything else and share this video. Until the next one, you guys, stay safe, take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, be blessed. And if you don't wear your mask, stay safe. Whichever one, like if you choose to wear a mask or not, just be safe, you guys, and be blessed. And until the next one, you guys, I'll see you guys later. Bye.